Hello and welcome to Castival. This is the podcast which brings on brilliant guests to pitch their dream music festival. My name is Matt Hoss and I'm the host, and I'm here to guide you around their music festival. Today's guest is a stand-up comedian, quite an extraordinary one. Please welcome Mr. Russell Hicks. Hello. Hello. Thank you, Matt. Thanks for having me on. It's a pleasure to have you, mate. How is things going for you today? Well, uh, it's going good, Matt. Today has only lasted for about a half an hour. <laughs> so far, I think it could be one of the best I've had yet. <laughs> well, I'm glad to hear that as well. Like, uh, you've you've started your day the best way possible, straight into a podcast recording talking about music festivals. What more do you want out of a day? It's, straight into it, dude. Yeah, absolutely. Like a Wallace and Gromit cartoon. I yes. just rolled out of bed. <laughs> Girlfriend threw me the microphone. <laughs> well, welcome to Castful, mate. And uh, the opening question I always like to start with is, if someone were to ask you what kind of music are you into, how do you typically respond to that question? Um, You know, if someone came up and, and asked me something like that, Matt, you know, I might say I, I'd be a little suspicious, first of all. <laughs> yeah. Um, what, who, what's up with that? What's this? <laughs> what's this guy's motive? <laughs> yeah. You know? Yeah, he just... guy comes up asks you something like that. He's got something else, some other objective. Um, but after uh, after I he passed that <laughs> series of interrogation techniques for me, yeah. and I realized he's legit. <laughs> yeah, I would say that when I was younger, I was way more like strict about what I listened to. I was yeah. like into punk rock, mm-hmm. and I was like, that's it punk or nothing <laughs> yes absolutely which was not a phrase in the punk community that <laughs> i could get to catch on yeah punk or nothing tried to sell that to a topic uh, yeah. <laughs> well i think the issue if you're trying to sell stuff to <laughs> as a punk motive that might be what would be blockading you you know what i mean you have to be yeah kind of, it's quite annoying you can't really make money of the punk community that's what i've been trying to do for all these years you know what i mean i know the amount the amount of things i've gotten into as a it, it, you know it, that, that there is no money in yeah. and i think yeah i'm gonna make a living <laughs> i because i was yeah, yeah. i did try i was in a punk band for a long time when i was younger and i yeah. thought this is what i'm gonna do and i look back on it i'm like the most successful punk rock musician right now is homeless yeah <laughs> what are you doing yeah um so which what band were you in can you tell us a little bit more about that because that's no oh, no because then people google it <laughs> Well, I don't care. I was in a punk band. I was in two punk bands when I was younger. I was in one called The Rich White Males. Yes. And then I was in another one. I was in this one called The Bugs for a while. That one was probably... uh, Nobody knew who either of them were. (laughs) Which is a good Uh, punk So it doesn't matter. Yeah, you you could look at what... You know what? The idea that I even assumed it could be found through a Google search, I'm safe. Yeah. I'm safe. (laughs) Uh, But I was was just like all into punk rock and that was it. But then... As I sort of like transitioned out of that, I you're free to listen to anything. So then I then I just became obsessed with listening to anything, all all different types of music, anything I could get my hands on, really. And I always find that really interesting because there is a maturity there. Because when you, as you say, when you are younger, you you're very set out in the ten, the things that you listen to, but you do branch out, and uh, I love I love seeing that transition as well. So, what did you play in your band? Were you singer, guitarist, bassist, drummer? What what kind of um, what instruments do you play? I I played guitar, and then I sang. Mm-hmm. I was always like, a couple of times I had to play bass, <laughs> but yeah, you know, yeah, it happens to the best of us. It happens to the, it best. Happens to the best of us, which was a which is a red flag right off the. I shouldn't have. <laughs> I shouldn't have kept going in that band. You got this guitar player who doesn't want to play bass. All right, fine. I play bass. Yeah. Well, to be fair, that's how Black Sabbath started. Uh, Geezer Butler, who's the bassist, was like, I'm a guitarist, but, you know, I'll play bass. And uh, it turned out all right for them. Oh, all right. Well, the exception proves the rule, I guess. For sure. But it was, uh, yeah, playing bass. And the thing about being in a band, which is so much better as a comedian, is like when you're in a band, you have to. And I think what made comedy so attractive to me when I, because that was the next thing I did. Mm-hmm was there everyone's gone you don't have to have a little committee meeting about the most minor thing Mm -hmm. yes you don't have to check with anyone you're on your own you can quit and keep going at your own pace it's great honestly that's the reason why i wanted to do comedy in the first place because i came from a uh, drama background and I really wanted to be an actor for a while and uh, I was also in the band as well which uh, 
didn't take off. Um, but it was a teenage band, so it's one of these things which are uh, a good concept, but not, uh, yeah, uh, th- we couldn't really play. But um, like, we, I wanted to do, I really wanted to be an actor just to be on stage, but then uh, I just didn't like hanging out. I, I couldn't rely on other people to do the same amount of work, if you know what I mean. Because I'm, I'm a bit of a, I'm, I'm a, bit of a nerd, do you know what I mean? I'm, I'm a very punk, but I'm also a bit of a nerd, do you know what I mean? So, like, I had to very much... Yeah. Um, yeah, you said that with a lot of conviction there. Like, uh... Yeah, because actually I just realized you just put it, yeah. you just put the whole thing into a perfect phrase, which is I've never been able to put my finger on it. That's the truth. Mm-hmm. I was in my early 20s. I was, like you said, I was a punk rocker, but I was really ambitious. Yeah. Yeah. And actually, yeah, you couldn't get them mm-hmm. to put the same amount of work in. Like, And actually it was unfair on them because – you'd basically get this group of people together mm. and you'd be like, all right, guys, come on. We're all going to go chase my dream. Yeah, 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 yeah. Hey, yeah. And then and then it was like, yeah, you'd realize like they just maybe didn't want to, they didn't care as much yeah. or something. And it, it was really like, imagine, you know how hard it is being a comic and you do these terrible gigs <laughs> yeah. and you imagine if you always had like two guys with you who didn't really want to be comedians. Right. Yes. Yeah. How, how crazy. And you're like, we're going to Leeds for 40 quid. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, and then when you get to Leeds, they're like, I don't like that joke. Let's do another one. It's like, what? <laughs> yeah. And also, it's not really much of a venue. It's more of a salad bar. And, you know, and like there's uh, people still eating. Yeah. And uh, and it's like it comedy can be very dispiriting. And uh, yeah, so yeah, but also, yeah, it it takes a lot of that. You need a lot of that passion early doors to get through a lot of the, the shit uh, to kind of get through there. Yeah. We're going to be talking a lot about uh, festivals. Uh, but uh, firstly, did you, did you ever perform at any festivals as a as a uh, musical act, or did you only perform as a comedian? Uh, uh, what are some of the, your favorite festivals that you've been to? No, my bands were never <laughs> invited anywhere. Actually, Matt, we were never put on any any kind of festival. That that is a gig far more prestigious <laughs> yeah. than than we were ever invited to play as a comedian i have gone to uh been invited and played a few festivals and that is for me the best way to experience a festival Mm -hmm. because what i think is interesting about this podcast why i was is i i hate music festivals i hate them (laughs) okay yeah tell us more about that i don't hate the music Mm -hmm. but this this idea of people cramming themselves into an uncomfortable, muddy, mm-hmm. toiletless situation mm-hmm. uh, is like, it's horrendous to me. But as a comedian, it's great because when you get invited to the festival, you usually get to like hang out in a cool area backstage. Mm-hmm. You come in, you do your thing, you hang around the festival for like an hour or two, three hours, and then you're out. Yeah. Some comedians like, hey, they, they've offered uh, – we can sleep we can sleep in a tent for the weekend i'm gonna stay and like that is just <laughs> medians will stay like two days after mm-hmm. after they've done their show yeah. i'm like i don't know man that's not for me it's quite interesting because uh we do have a fair few guests who come on who don't like the camping and don't like the mud but they do love music so it's kind of a it's a it's an odd thing. It's like they really want to see the bands as much as possible, but also, and these bands usually only come for festivals and are quite hard to, they don't really do tours that much. Uh, but also you do have to deal with that situation. To be fair, I like, I like the kind of the camping and the, and the kind of the grottier aspects of it. Cause uh, I feel like a bit like a, I feel like Bear grills, but like a very Diet Coke version of him, if you know what I mean. Whatever gets you through it, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, absolutely. We can definitely talk about that more during your festival as well, and we'll get there in a second. If you had to pitch your idea of a festival, what would it be? What kind of thing would you kind of go for? Yes, it's called the Elbow Room Festival. Oh, wow. Is that, so is this your? Uh, uh, is this what your actual festival is called, or do you just want Elbow Room? I mean, if you want me to pitch a festival, <laughs> this is what it's going to be. It's going to be designed specifically around uh, comfort, <laughs> Yeah. And and personal space. <laughs> the respectful festival. I like that. Yeah. The personal space festival yeah. where basic, you know, like uh, we, you know, uh, it, my idea, like if I had to pitch a festival, yeah, it would just be like, listen, this is for people who 
when they sit on a train or something, they they like, you know, they they find a carriage that's just a little bit less, a little more spaced yeah. out. Mm -hmm. Like I would, you know, every everybody who buys a ticket, we build a toilet for that person. <laughs> Sorry, like so, literally build a toilet for him. As yeah, well. <laughs> so we go, all right. Yeah. Every ticket holder gets a, sp uh, and they're like, they're great. These toilets are great, Matt. Like, you're going to have a hard time <laughs> going outside and seeing the festival because you're just going to be in the, you're going to be in the loop for the whole yeah. <laughs> the entirety of it. Well, this is already like, We'll, we'll go and talk more about your festival in a second, but I love this strong open pitch of everyone. Everyone's going to have a personalized toilet as well. And also on top of that, like you in your field or wherever you choose to do it, there's going to be incredible plumbing like all the way through. It's that uh, I, you know what, Russell, yeah. I don't want, I don't say this lightly, but you are a visionary. You know, you, you, you're going to bring a new wave of festivals in this podcast. You know, you're going to, I'm the Buckminster Fuller of, <laughs> of, uh, the music festivals that's right just before we go into the final bit of like uh, we're talking about your music fest what is some of your favorite albums or some albums uh you grew up around which you really idolize oh there's been a lot of albums that really hit me honestly there's there's like albums that hit you when you were uh i i mean i was i was a, a youth really young but about 11 or 12 or something in the late 90s and it was like oh no sorry mid 90s Green Day, mm -hmm. Green Day was huge. Yes, absolutely. And I still, I'm still a little mad at my mother because I, I went to a, a record store and there was an awesome poster of Green Day looking all punk, mm -hmm. and I said I want that. And my mom let the guy that worked at the music store convince me to buy a poster of Blues Traveler. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry for your loss. I mean things like I mean, and I like listen. I liked the Blues Traveler album. He he sold me. This guy sold me the poster and a Blues Traveler album. <laughs> I mean, I mean, I'm, uh, looking back, I'm like, who, who was that guy? That's a bold tactic, you know. What I mean, to be kind of like, yeah. hey, uh, here's a poster for a band you haven't listened to yet, but and also yeah. an album. That's that's a bold. You, you, yeah. You're planning to be a fanboy. It was the '90s. Yeah. I think bands just sent A and R reps yeah. to work as. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Hey, hey, what are you doing that for, bud? <laughs> want this blues traveler and you were like so hold on do you have any uh, uh do you have any posters of rich white males because I, I think i think we're pretty good actually <laughs> would, you, would you like to buy our stuff uh we've got some rich white males napkins yeah, <laughs> yeah <laughs> it, it was a misguided marketing technique i thought it would <laughs> rich white males toilet paper yeah. people love that actually yeah well i think it's time to go and set up camp at your festival Hello and welcome to Season 3 of Castable. Great to have you back. If you like what we do, please give us a 5 star rating on Apple Podcasts and write us a little kind review. Also, why don't you share our podcast? Tell a friend about it. Word of mouth really helps spread the world, so please help us do that. Why don't you tweet at us at Castable Podcasts and drop me a follow at Matt House Comedy. Why don't you watch me on Twitch at Matt House Comedy? If you like sci-fi books, why don't you buy my book called Purify from www.matthousecomedy.com. Enjoy the rest of the episode. Cheers. Dang, 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 now where you gone? Dang, 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 where you gone? Dang, 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 where you gone? And where have you bought the ten pegs? Dang, 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 now where you gone? Dang, 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 where you gone? Dang, 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 where you gone? And where have you bought the ten pegs? We kind of talked about it already, but is the name of your festival Elbow Room Festival, or is there a different name for it? Because either way, it's a banging. Yeah, it's called the Elbow Room Festival. That's nice, yeah. A festival for personal space. You've even got a slogan that's so slick. I really like yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, it's right underneath it, yeah. Now, um, you don't have to disclose this information early up, but uh, do you reckon there will be confusion with the band Elbow? And will they have a room there at the festival as well? So it's like this is the, the Elbow Room Elbow Room Festival. I have no idea who yeah. they are. And <laughs> if they have a problem, they can talk to my yeah. lawyers. <laughs> Yeah, I like it. Okay, um, okay. Elbow are a band run by Gar Garvey. So, Russell, where about geographically do you want your festival to be? Well, I don't have a problem with the standard Lake District area, far, you know, right out in the middle of the country. I do like that. I do like that. So, way out in the woods, very rustic. So, the standard setting, really. I like those ones that are out in the, the middle of nowhere. So, 
just to clarify, you don't like music festivals, uh, but you don't mind them being like in the countryside. Do you like, in terms of outdoor gigs, you think that's okay? Yes. Well, Matt, what we're going to do at my festival is we're going to tear up the natural environment <laughs> and we're putting down AstroTurf. <laughs> so it will be, it will be in, you will be surrounded by you know the the trees and everything but your ground will be pristine mudless astroturf like already the overheads for this festival are crazy personalized plumbing for every festival mm -hmm. and tearing up grass for astroturf the ticket yeah the we, ticket price is going to be high for this we've got some big anonymous investors <laughs> that feel very strongly about personal space yeah. I, I can tell you who it hasn't invested, and that's Greenpeace. Greenpeace had not not sponsored this festival. <laughs> no, they tried to shut us down. <laughs> Go. We stuck it to those hippies. <laughs> All right, maybe the astroturf is somehow biodegradable. I don't know. Okay, it's new. It's new technology. Yeah, that, <laughs> that's fine. It's astroturf that emits oxygen. It's it, in fact, it's healthier than grass. That's what it is. It it's actually better than grass. Yeah. <laughs> After my festival, they like they meet in the climate change, uh, <laughs> and they're just like, "Hey, wait, so <laughs> let's fucking this this guy needs to be in charge of the earth." So, so, and then and then and then the whole the whole thing takes off. Now there's more space in the movie theaters. Yes. You don't have to sit next to people smashing your elbows. Yeah. Starbucks takes those little codes off their toilets. Yes. <laughs> oh, you got a lot of nerve, Starbucks. <laughs> So okay, do you hate that when you walk yes, in there? Yeah. Uh, do you, wh what's the code? Let me let me let me tell you something, Starbucks. Okay, you build one of these every five feet around the world. The least you can do is let me come in and take a shit. <laughs> I'm not sure about you, Russell, but I I know that every time that I've just finished a long drive before a gig and I I, I really need a pee, uh, and so I go to like the nearest Costa or whatever. Or I, I usually go to the venue, but like if not, I go to a Costa or it's, and yeah, there's the code things. Like, come on, mate, I just need to have a pee first, and I'll, 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 yeah. I'll I get. I don't mind about the coffee, but just let me in first because I'm gagging. But yeah. Yeah, it's like when you call your bank, and I swear this country has more security protocols than anywhere yeah. in the world. <laughs> I'm like, who are you protecting? Because, like, I can't get yeah. it. So <laughs> yeah. Protecting yourself. It's fine. I'll take the risk. Like, Starbucks just... So, firstly, we have AstroTurf, which solves climate change, uh, which, uh, is, it, you know, it solves global warming in a single festival. It's, you know, pretty strong message. But another strong message is from the even title of the festival, Elbow Room. So what's... You talked about the codes. Um, what is it precisely you don't like like uh, bash an elbow against other people like is it uh have you always not liked that or is it uh, to do with festivals and gigs what tell us more about that yeah i uh i do have a i I've, i just anytime people want to go like any anyone who goes somewhere because there's a lot of people there like if that's a selling point i'm already suspect mm -hmm. of that person yeah so you know i just think it's you know what it is. It's a fault of capitalism. All right. They like, <laughs> for example, when you're, you know, it's like when you're on a plane, when you're in the when you're on the tube, mm -hmm. anything, it's like, you know, you could smash yeah. more people in here or you could have a few less people and give us a little space. Like when you're sitting on the tube, like why? Why could there not be a six inch? Why are we just yeah. elbows to elbows? Right. Well, to be fair, I uh, I live in the countryside. I I live in the uh, in the northeast, and uh, I yeah I, I I always get a bit claustrophobic. So I do know what you mean. Like in terms of like, I don't think I could live in the city again because I feel like uh, I've got too much. Like uh, I, I like a little bit of space. I like my own space as well. Uh, um, yeah, it's different at festival, but also all. But I've also been to festivals where your tent's been chopped in. You have to kind of go into this like divot, and like uh, you have to like like sleep in really uncomfortable positions just because there's no space. So you're proposing. A a little bit more luxury, a little bit more distancing, and yeah, uh, just a bit more, yeah, a bit more chilled. Yeah, just a little bit more comfortable. Yeah, you know, nice. you go somewhere, you want a nice, you want a nice environment to relax. Like, even like comedy clubs. Like sometimes I'm struck with the fact when I'm at a comedy club, I just look out in the audience and I think, you know, I would not come to the show mm -hmm. in any other capacity than what I'm doing right now. <laughs> yeah, and like 
in, especially in places like Edinburgh Fringe, where like uh, the, some of the bigger companies, so they uh, they put chairs, which are quite small chairs, quite close yeah. together. So you like, and I'm I'm a, I have a bit of a bigger frame, so I'm very much like I'm kind of like sat between two very uh, very different people. Like I'm, it's you make more money, but you're not going to enjoy the show whatsoever. Yeah, and the guy laughs. The guy next to you laughs and bumps you and <laughs> spills his beer. Like I can't I can't enjoy anything if there's someone. Yeah, I absolutely, I get that. So, how many people maximum would you like at this festival, if you had to put a number to it? Oh, wow. How many people max? Well, you know, listen, I don't want to, you know, I don't, I don't want to exclude people. I mean, my impulse is to say 65 max, but... <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Um, 65 is that is a that's quite a that's a very small festival I'd say but it kind of goes with what you're saying well Matt we've got to build toilets for these people yeah yes for sure for sure and okay. yeah <laughs> so if you want to up the numbers you're gonna you're gonna suffer quality <laughs> at, uh, when it comes to the latrines yes but for sure. yeah let's uh let's keep it small let's uh you know let's uh let's just keep it like you know, it'll be a very s exclusive. I'd like to keep it uh, under 100 people, about 99 people. Okay, nice. Yeah, 99 people. Uh, without revealing the lineup, how much would you rec how much do you reckon you would charge per ticket? Uh, well, the people on the lineup, because in this reality, I am a great public figure. <laughs> Which you are, yeah. They, uh, well, I invented the I invented the environmentally friendly astroturf. <laughs> Yes, absolutely. Yeah, you uh, you're like you're up there with uh, Greta Thunberg. You know, I mean, you're very, very, very uh, internationally famous now. I, I make Greta Thunberg look like an absolute <laughs> waste. I mean, yeah. honestly, just get she really she needs to up her game with what I'm doing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that 16 year old girl needs to up her game. <laughs> up your game. Come on, 16 years old. I already had two Blues Travelers albums by then. <laughs> Um, so, well, now you're getting into logistics. All right. Well, yeah. Like these people are going to play for free. Um, all right. Well, I don't, I'm definitely not a fan of overcharging mm -hmm. because, uh, anytime anything goes over 20 pounds, I never feel like it was worth it. Oh, really? Yeah. It's very rare yeah. that I'm like, yeah, uh, nothing really needs to be over 20 pounds. <laughs> There's nothing needs to be over 20 pounds. <laughs> <laughs> well, nothing. Uh, nothing needs to be over twenty. I paid well, three hundred pounds for my blender. Yeah, <laughs> actually worth every penny. But still, <laughs> who sets these prices, man? Nothing <laughs> needs to be over twenty pounds. So this this is twenty pounds. For real? Okay. <laughs> twenty pounds, man. It's actually a really good value, uh, especially if you're getting a personalized toilet as well, which actually would be. It's a lot less money than. <laughs> Then an actual toilet, yeah, would, uh, would cost. So it's actually, do you, yeah, very, very good, very good. Um, <laughs> and not to not to break the fourth wall ever so slightly, but Russell has sent me uh, three of his artists, <laughs> and uh, if I would pay twenty pounds to watch like one song of theirs each, uh, let's let's just say that that's because uh, <laughs> they're quite yeah. legendary. I want to up the price now. <laughs> no, because I was just thinking. You, if you, if people come to something and don't pay much, they don't respect it, and that's coming from somebody who's performed for three years on the free fringe. <laughs> Trust me, there's a, there's psychologically something going on when people don't pay something. They they don't respect it. So these yeah. tickets are now these tickets are now nine hundred pounds. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> literally less than two minutes ago. You're like, there's nothing, nothing worse. Here's the thing: <laughs> ninety nine people are allowed in the festival. Tickets yeah. are nine hundred pounds. Mine is free. And basically, my attitude for this festival, our our new slogan is, "Well, don't come then." <laughs> <laughs> that's the that's the slogan. <laughs> well, don't come then. Yeah, yeah. It's going on without you. No, oh, I. <laughs> <laughs> I love the attitude in this, Russell. This is great so far. <laughs> imagine who would want, because imagine the kind, because listen, Matt, we're trying to get a different class of people. Mm -hmm. And imagine the kind of upstanding mm -hmm. citizen. It's gonna show up. Definitely a reverse psychology thing going on there, where you sort of, you're kind of nagging the audience to come. Well, don't come then. Whatever. Like it's only going to cost you nine hundred quid anyway. So, <clears throat> fuck yeah. Yeah, don't don't go. Yeah, I, I really want to go now. And we'd love to have you. 
<laughs> yeah, for okay. 900 pounds. Let's go and check out your amazing uh, festival and who's playing. Get ready for a gratuitous guitar solo. Here we go for 14 minutes. Russell, you alluded earlier saying that you kind of like to go into a festival and leave the same day. Do you have a one-day festival? Uh, how many days have you got for your festival? Well, this is a... I, I in my mind, had this down as a three-day festival. Because I think, yeah, this is different. I want to... I want to... I want to be there for the full experience for my festival. And I suppose you didn't like previous festivals because you didn't have elbow room, but now you do have it. You have it. You have the luxury to enjoy it, I guess. Yeah. So three day festival. Let's start with your Friday. And I would love to hear who is opening up your Friday because the first band on, the first artist on is really, really uh, important to kind of get the vibe right. So uh, who do you think the first opening act is for your festival, for the elbow room festival is? I was going to, by the way, first of all, this festival is on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. What? What, what a game changer. Why Why Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday? Just get, because, because you know what, man? Get rid of these weekend warriors, okay? <laughs> yeah. I, I don't like this. So I, I wait till Friday. Party starts Monday. <laughs> Quit your job. Yeah. That's the thing. Everyone has to <laughs> submit me. Proof that they have quit their job as well. I don't want anyone there to be employed. Hold on, hold on. So it's the Freedom Festival. <laughs> Firstly, it costs a grand to get in, but you also have to quit your job. Yeah. It and they also have to submit to you, as you said. So it's slowly becoming a cult, Russell. It's slowly on, it's on that slippery slope down. <laughs> yes, there very well could be a documentary made about my festival. <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. And uh... yeah, they come in and they just say, "Yeah, I quit my job." And then I, I touch, I place my finger on their forehead and I say, "You're free now." Yeah. <laughs> enjoy the, enjoy the turf. Go and enjoy um, the kooks. Yeah. And enjoy, yeah. So I would say day one. Yes, Monday. Uh, we're gonna start with Miles Davis. Oh, first act on is Miles Davis. Miles Davis, he's back. Wow, oh, what a legendary start as well, because. Yeah, like, obviously, who doesn't know Miles Davis and the wonderful uh, jazz musician. And, yeah, so why, why did you pick Miles Davis? I just think, like, you can't really get any cooler than these these classic jazz musicians, and especially Miles Davis. And there's something about Miles Davis in particular that you feel like you're almost getting all of music. Like, in a way, he's everything. He's punk. Yeah. He's like, he's, uh, he's classical. He's so, and also you can jam his band full of people too. You can put John Coltrane on sax. Yeah. You, sure. uh, you get like Herbie Hancock playing the piano. So you can like, you can sneak in other great people. Yes. Yeah. And I mean, you know, Miles was just, he was just a wild character. He was, uh, he was, he was reckless. I think it'd be, I don't know. I've always wanted to see him. And he can play a big stage, too. Yes. And there's there's quite a calming... Obviously, you're trying to push this luxury, uh, like, kind of relaxed and kind of, like, comfort angle. And I think Miles Davis, to open up that festival, really highlights that. You know what I mean? It's a nice... It's going to be super elegant and warm and introductory. Do you know what I mean? Like, people like let's just, ease into it. Yes, that's it. Absolutely. We're going to be here for three days, guys. How long do you reckon Miles and the band are playing for? Well, he can play as long as he wants. I imagine he's going to do a couple hours at least. 15 hours. There we go. He's do a, 15, yeah. Yeah. Just, he's just just there all night. Yeah. He's there. You can have a whole stage just dedicated to Miles where he's just, just jamming all the time. He's not allowed to stop. Yeah, he's just up there, man. Do what you want, Miles. <laughs> do what you want. Brilliant. And uh, so do you have a particular affinity to Miles Davis or jazz music? I do, yeah. I really like jazz music. I got into jazz music like I think the thing about jazz music is like it's the it's the guys who make it as well. There's like a there's just I think any time any any medium that involves like just one person doing the thing, comedians mm -hmm. especially really relate to it. Like we have an affinity for professional wrestling mm -hmm. for you know anything that's like 
an itinerant one man troubadour type who just travels around like we're we're super into that and and jazz is like that man and jazz jazz is really applicable to stand up too because it's kind of the same thing you know like mm -hmm. you can achieve the same kind of things with like you know you play the notes but sometimes you go off on one so i don't know yeah that's that's a really really um novel way of discussing what com comedy is because uh, yeah it can it can feel like that especially when you've got the right room you've got the right uh, improvisation you know it can feel um yeah it can feel like you're hitting like you're creating something new and different and odd and uh but you can still always come back to what you know as well i, I like that a lot yeah and i think there's some like people probably have a hard time listening to it but um once you get past like you get into it like the thing is we live in such an era right now of like chatter. Like there's always chatter. Like mm -hmm. you're always listening to the, like, honestly, I'm always, you've either got a podcast in mm -hmm. or you're like watching some crazy crime document. Like you're always, and so actually it's a pretty interesting experience to just have, uh, no word voiceless, just no words, just music mm -hmm. instrumental. Awesome. Well, I think that's a brilliant start to the festival and it can own, well, it's it's a uh, it's hard to uh, build from there, but uh, let's let's see if we can. So get off the stage, Miles. <laughs> yeah, get off. Hey, you. you've done your fifteen hours. Make way. <laughs> His hands are just bleeding, but like, uh, <laughs> but yeah. Uh, so after Miles, who do you have on for your Monday? Okay, now this is where I risk sounding like an absolute asshole. <laughs> Here we go. And I was I really struggled with this when I thought, do I put this guy in? So everybody out there, just give me a minute. So Mozart goes on. <laughs> oh my god! All right, god. now hang on. This is I'm I'm risking sounding like one of those really obnoxious Desert Island discs where they're like every single pick they're like oh, box cello concerto. I'm like really? Come on, you're gonna be on a desert island for your entire life. Take this seriously. <laughs> There's no way you just want to listen to that. Like, be yeah. honest with yourself. Yeah. I like the people who come on and they're like, gotta be honest, mate. B-52's Rock Lobster. I'm like, yeah. okay, yeah. 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 <laughs> yes, yeah. So, yeah, but the thing is, Mozart's like, been, he's, we've allowed him, he's been around for like six months. He's in contemporary world. Mm -hmm. So he's picked up some tricks. Yeah, so he's, so we've got a, a remodeled Mozart where he's kind of, he's, he's become... Uh, aware of the modern world so he's he's obviously uh reanimated he's back and uh yeah so what kind of how, how do you reckon you would change in that way i think if you left mozart in the 21st century for a year it would just be kanye yeah <laughs> he would just he would just come out and literally just play jesus yeah, <laughs> that's what I think. So we're having Mozart playing Jesus, which I think Mozart comes out. We're like, oh, we're going to hear those. Oh, this is going to be amazing. Don Giovanni. He's like, I'm just covering Jesus. <laughs> like, <"What?" laughs> then he does it. Yeah. I mean, to be fair, that that alone is worth the 20 pounds. Uh, I mean, 900 oh, pounds. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I wasn't quite sure. We never really had any classical music on here before, which I think is we have missed off. But I also think your pitch of Mozart playing Jesus, that is perfect. That's genius. <laughs> yeah. Just ramping us up a little bit and see what all the fuss was about. It's like kind of bringing back Beethoven to play Weezer songs. You know what I mean? Like, Because uh... I, th I think give Mozart, I think he'd really rock the house. I don't think it'd be just like, He's coming out like, oh, this is going to be another chill. People, you'd be surprised. Yeah, I, I can I can kind of imagine like Mozart being like trying to do like a crowd di a, a crowd dive, you know what I mean? He would like, he would surf out into the audience and be like, you motherfuckers ready? And stuff like oh, yeah. that. He, 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 oh, yeah. He, he, dirty mouth yeah. on him, yeah. <laughs> Real mouth on him. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like a motherfucking Mozart. Yeah. <laughs> dog check this just smoking a lot of like skinny cigarettes oh he's side. ripped yeah. he's like <laughs> smoking weed yeah. neck tattoos and <laughs> oh yeah he's been around for a year he's all tatted yeah. up brilliant <laughs> so a phenomenal idea and uh yeah I, th I think that's that's great i love that <laughs> that's very original um w would kanye be around oh or? yeah no yeah. he couldn't he's not gonna he's not gonna let that happen and not make a make his presence so he Kanye shows up and uh, yeah, they do they do a collaboration. You know, Kanye does one of his patented uh, whimsical speeches for no reason. <laughs> 
and but and and like we're all just like oh, okay Kanye come on play some music and but Mozart's like hey shh listen to him listen to him Mozart's like rapped just can't can't believe it he thinks Kanye's a genius and uh so we you know it's just it's just it's epic man they just they do just a whole thing together and they play for hours and hours Mozart smashes things I mean it's to the point I've got to ask them to leave the festival because yeah. they're starting to take the attention away from what it from me and what it's yeah. about so and yeah they they're quite riotous in the green room as well so yeah like uh, you can uh, have to... oh yeah they're like they're just like they're ready to take over man <laughs> once they started trying to rip up the astro tour i was like all right all right yeah. hey. yes yeah it's like hey that's that's my uh, Nobel peace prize you're ripping up that's there right. put it back put it back mate i love you guys but hey come on now they jump in their helicopter and they're out yeah <laughs> they're out see you guys next year and people are just like, wow. People ask telling me it all day. We thought that was going to be garbage. Yeah. And that was the second band on. That's the second artist on the whole festival. Yeah. And I'm like, well, I think, yeah, I hope every, and as you know, the, since this is kind of more of a, well, you say cult, I like to think of it as a, <laughs> um, a positive community with a powerful, charismatic leader. That's yes. how I would look at it. Yeah. So and- I, I wake up the next day. And this is a this is a daily thing where I just sort of address the people from on high. I've got a bullhorn. Yeah. And I come out, I do my speech, and I tell them all, I say, listen, I know a lot of you thought Mozart was going to be terrible, and it wasn't, was it? So don't question me. <laughs> you say that with a, a military regalia and lots of armed men around. I say, repeat, repeat after me. Do never question my ways. Yes. So, was Mozart headlining the Monday, or is, is there any other acts you would like for your Monday? No, Mo, Mo, Mozart went on Tuesday night. Oh, is that Tuesday night? Sorry. Yeah. We're doing we're doing one a day. Okay. Oh, I see. Nice I get and you. easy. Nice and easy. Mozart went on the next day. Okay. So Monday, Miles Davis for fifteen hours. Yeah. Tuesday, Mozart playing Jesus with Kanye um, West. Yes. He throws in some other hits, but yeah, mostly. Yeah. Jesus. So is it kind of like an all day kind of thing? One one is it one act a day and then kind of like mosey on into the Yeah, well we've got other activities. Yeah, what other activities do you have? Well, first of all, this festival is um we only serve coffee at this festival. I know this festival sounds <laughs> I know this festival is starting to sound oh no booze. People I know that people think this doesn't sound like a lot of fun. Well, if you remember my slogan, don't come. <laughs> And also, never question Russell. Don't question me and don't come. <laughs> don't go to the festival then if you don't want to see Mozart and Jesus. Get wild. <laughs> With an Americano in hand. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm yeah, sure. while I'm just ripped on espressos. Because uh, I'm not a big fan. I don't mind people drinking. But in my experience, I've only met two people that don't turn into total assholes when they're drunk. Mm-hmm my girlfriend and my mother and but mainly because both of them pass out pretty quickly so i don't know if they had <laughs> if they had time maybe they would be but yeah so uh, i'm like all right we don't need that so it's just it's a coffee festival we're all clear headed yeah. i mean this is a very specific festival and i can't like the more you talk about it the more i love it because it's just so it's got a certain aesthetic and vibe to it what's in the coffee russell oh my god it's it's so good it's like it's the kind of coffee like it's just it's all exported like really you know that coffee that they they're like oh this is like uh you know fermented poop from some animal <laughs> in Guatemala it's like what yeah it's all yeah. the best yeah. baristas like award winning are making this coffee yeah yeah for sure and so that's that's all and we have water as well i mean this isn't like we get dehydrated. So if it's teetotal, is there any nightlife at your festival? Is there any kind of uh, partying going on or is it just nice and relaxed? Yeah, we have uh, Yeah, we have just nice, chill, deep, philosophical conversations. <laughs> really good stuff, though. Like, no, no, you know what I mean? This is a, this, this is a free space. You say whatever you want. Yes. Uh... <laughs> get wild. Yeah, it's uh, really put the world to rights. I mean, these are highly educated people I've got at this festival, Matt. I'm a Nobel Prize winner. I invented uh, oxygenated AstroTurf. (laughs) No one's getting canceled at this at this festival. Yeah, we're we're just we're going to discuss. It's not uncommon for us to walk out of this festival 
with an in, with some kind of new idea that changes humanity. And that's, you can use that next idea at the next year's following festival. So this year is uh, AstroTurf, yeah. which cures global warming. But also next year you can have something else, like M- M- Mozart playing a different Kanye album. Who knows? We, we'll come up with new things, yeah, that we implement. Yes, yeah. You know, we're always looking for a way to make the toilets better. Yeah. <laughs> Obviously, yeah. Because yeah. they just, they can't, they can't get any more comfortable as far as I'm concerned. Yeah. So instead of uh, riotous parties or philosophical debates, very nice. Very good stuff. Um, it's, it feels more like an academic festival. Well, no, it's not. I mean, because the parties are, it's, it's wild. <laughs> it's, you know, it's controlled. What do you yeah. want, Matt? Like that's uh, our, hey, that's, hey. that's our third slogan. No, I'm serious. What do you want? Look, you what do you want? You want sex? We got a cabin for that. <laughs> if that's what you're into, we're open. Hey, we today. You asked. We're very free at this festival. There are different areas. Yeah. <laughs> so apart from any a- kind of devious debauchery you want to get involved in we just don't make a big deal but we're just not running around on mdma we're controlled about from your sex cabin what and the mdma uh um the outlake what other things do you which other devious things do you have at different areas in your festival what are you into what do you want uh, so i like it because you create a bespoke service and yeah uh, yeah okay uh, you do anything you want <laughs> You know, you, you just whatever you need, like we, it's, we're open, you know, you can have you can sit and have a, a really intellectual conversation or uh, or, you know, go down to uh, whatever cabin B and cabin B. It's, it's far away from the festival because you don't want it to detract from the other stuff as well. Uh, but yeah. Um, OK. Yeah. Um, but there's a there's a monorail. There's a sorted sorted cabin over there. Brilliant. So, is there any other artists for your Monday intros that you wanted, or was it just the uh, the headlines? Oh well, you know, I would like to have. There's different. There's different like uh, conventions going on all day. Mm-hmm. So there's a basically there's a comic book convention. <gasps> That's awesome. Yeah, and the, all the great comic book writers, Mark Miller, Brian Michael Bendis, uh, mm-hmm. they're they're there, and they, Alan Moore even shows yeah. up. Uh, for a minute but he starts to take again some heat off of me as far as cult leader so yeah. <laughs> I, I ask him to leave yeah, yeah yeah because we don't do witchcraft at this festival that's one thing yeah we won't tolerate and you know alan can get a bit you know voodoo so for sure yeah and and yeah. like and then there's like there's this other area where there's like all it's just movie directors from the 1970s all doing talks about their their different you know films and you can go check that out so those guys are all you know abound really uh really it's just a haven um for nerdy men i've realized yes this has Uh, just become this is a i'm actually gonna have to (laughs) actually now that i say it it's starting to annoy i'm gonna have to balance this out and then we've got a whole other section of just powerful female energy (laughs) yes because honestly, you late seventies movies and comic books. This was I immediately started to see my <laughs> audience, and I thought I can't. <laughs> and they've all quit their jobs. There. For, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I can't. Wait, yeah, I can't be there for three days with these guys. <laughs> all right. I'm not. <laughs> yeah, you got to balance it out a bit. Yeah. Yeah. yeah for sure. So, uh, just great female authors from the past, yeah. and yeah, powerful women in history. Yeah, just, just they're just hanging out. Yeah. It's a woke festival. It's diverse. So on your final day, on your Wednesday, uh, which who do you have playing? Okay, well now, now we have cleansed the palate. We are, you know, by this point, um, over the two day festival, we have seen some incredible music, mind blowing stuff, and it's all been building up. We, you know, by this point, I assume we have satiated every sexual <laughs> urge we have just exercised every debaucherous demon that we have in our souls by this point yes. i mean by by wednesday morning you should be like you want nothing there's nothing you want you're just like that's it <laughs> what do you want i don't want anything be anymore be blase i'll be like yeah. here's here's 10 women want to have sex i don't need it the orgy no i don't need it coffee no i got it 
and that's when you're ready. That's when you're ready. The showstopper. That's when I'm going to have the clash. Yes. Oh, my God. Clash. Oh. Yeah, I had a, I was thinking, should I do the clash or the Ramones or the Sex Pistols? And I thought, well, I got to say, man, you know, because I want you got to the Ramones are very specific. Some of the Sex Pistols. And I think mm -hmm. all the musicians I've had on, they sort of give you such a full meal in one band. Mm -hmm. And I think the clash would do that. Yeah, the clash. Uh, obviously, um, yeah, like late seventies punk rockers, and uh, obviously go into the eighties as well. But like, uh, I think I do totally agree. The Clash offers so much in terms of uh, their repertoire and uh, what they do on stage. Uh, so, what? Um, why are the Clash special for you? Well, if you ever see old footage of the Clash live, mm -hmm. you know, um, I mean, they went into like arenas and stuff, but there was a period where they were like in little nightclubs and. Um, you and I would have saved ourselves a lot of time being in bands if we yeah. I think every young punk band or band should be like, oh, you're starting a band. And then they get shown a video of The Clash doing a live show and then most of them will quit. <laughs> Why would they quit? They're just like, I mean, even now I watch it. And I'm like, whoa, that is they're just in, they were just an incredible, mm -hmm. incredible live band. They they just their shows were insane. They would just put so much like genuine, not that fake kind of we're 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 jumping around energy. It was like mm -hmm. real passion, and uh, it just would blow the roof off a of place. It's like it's like watching a comedian who you you think you've seen good comedy, and then you see someone go to another yeah. level. You're like holy shit! And I um, love it when you watch a live either a show or seeing like live footage of a band and you're like wow oh my god i can't believe it. it it can absolutely blow your mind as well and as you say it's like uh yeah it's a very very uh amazing experience to see that it's just to see people be tight and genuine and uh, yeah it's uh yeah i think the thing with the clash was like it wasn't like they were doing anything which is i think again goes back to why i like jazz is it and everything is like it was just what was coming off of them. Mm -hmm. Their intent was so in intense. That's what was making them such a, so electric live on stage. Yeah, I, that's a really awesome point as well. Yeah, and uh, the Clash are yeah they they've got hits for days and uh, and it, I, I I really really uh, admire them and love what they do as well. And they they I think the Clash are also kind of underrepresented in terms of their influence, the people they influence in the future. They're, they're, well, even to this day, people are still uh, influenced by the Clash, and they have so much. They just keep on giving so much. And uh, uh, but if you had to recommend one album for anyone listening to this who has never heard the Clash before, which one would you start with? Uh, the first album. I like okay. the first album the best. Yeah. You know, and it's the most punky, but it's like it's. It's great. That's the good album. Did that album influence you a lot when you were getting into music yourself? Yeah, it was. Yeah, because, uh, you know, when I started out, you listen to very specific stuff. But then once I started adding in The Clash, nobody's no no one's taste is, you know, ever done a disservice by mm -hmm. sprinkling in a little bit of The Clash. So mm -hmm. the music I would start to make, although still terrible. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Was a little less shit <laughs> after I met The Clash. And yeah. Joe Strummer, who was the lead singer of The Clash, uh, when I went, to, he did a solo thing. And I, I'll never forget this. I went and saw him when I was like 17. And we were, we were all standing outside this venue. And w we had driven like three hours or four hours to see him. Yeah. And uh, all of a sudden, unbeknownst to me and like 30 kids it was a 18 and up venue and we were yeah. like what the what and so joe strummer appears uh, up on the steps and we're like whoa and he starts talking to the security guard figures out what's happened he takes out a pen and paper he put every single kid on the guest list oh wow that's yeah. amazing yeah i was like oh. that that was that was incredible may that's that that's an amazing story and and so you got to walk up to him he would come you'd one by one he go what's your name so you got oh to my. like talk to him as well yeah you oh know and you'd go God. and he would write your name down it was like 
and how, how was that experience? How was he with you? He was he was great. He, yeah. Well, I'll never forget. He looked me right in the eye, and he said, "You're going to do great things for the environment one day." <laughs> Hey, I smell AstroTurf on you, boy. And go, I said, go. and you're going to play that festival. <laughs> and then I kissed him on the lips. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure what part. I'm sure some of that's true, but like. <laughs> but, no, he was cool, though. Yeah, that's awesome. That's honestly, there's a lot of acts who wouldn't necessarily do that. But I like, like, I love it when, and also I, I, with, with punk, it's kind of interesting because there's some people who don't, who are punk in terms of sound, but not necessarily in politics. But doing something just as simple as that is a really nice and genuine thing to do. It's well, well, it was, yeah, because I read this piece by uh, Lester Bangs, who was like a rock and roll critic, and uh, he wrote it in the late 70s. He he went on tour with The Clash. And I was reading in that recently, and I, uh, I, I was like, oh, wow, that he made a big point out of being like, because this is like when Lester Bangs is from when rock was like all pompous and led zeppelin and he said the thing that struck him the most he couldn't believe how egalitarian they were like that how much they were just like welcoming their they would like go hang out with their crowd and like mm -hmm. and he was like this is bizarre and i was like holy shit man he that that he was still like that because mm -hmm. this was 2000 i don't know fucking how old i was like 2000 2001 and uh yeah. it was like Whoa, he's still like that. Stuff like that, man, makes you, yeah. if you ever, if if you, like, you see someone be that generous with their time, mm -hmm. it, it really resonates with you. Like, if you ever have someone, like, if you catch yourself being an asshole or something, you just remember, like, dude, Joe, Joe Strummer, the legendary yeah. Joe Strummer, made time for everyone. So surely you can do Matt Haas's podcast. Do you yeah. know what I mean? Like, <laughs> <laughs> uh, which is uh, many conversations which agents have been having around the world <laughs> in the yeah. last six months yeah <laughs> and uh, um <laughs> but yeah absolutely and uh and i kind of think especially with comedy it kind of keeps you humble like that as well because like at the fringe uh it can be kind of like like you you worry about all these things but the kind of shows i i want to do is make sure that everyone feels included and they have that kind of diy feel to it but yes yeah, so i'm glad you know joe strummer is going to be my my uh my my model yeah, for man right now. just be That's cool awesome. i remember i talked to ross noble once and he said he will talk to you for hours and he answered all these questions and really just nerdy stuff and uh i was like thanks for just being so generous and he said well look when I was a young comic, I did the exact same thing to Eddie Izzard. He said, when Eddie Izzard would come to town, I would just absolutely rinse him for information. And he said, I told myself, if I ever make it, I'll do that for other people. I, I have to. So I don't know. That's just like, I'm blown away sometimes at the generosity of like, mm -hmm. you know, because uh, sometimes a lot of times you'll meet people who are nowhere near as talented or yeah. successful as that person and they're like well, this is gonna be five minutes you're like yeah geez. absolutely and they're not coming to the festival <laughs> in fact they are mortal enemies of russell's cult yes yeah, so i'm training my cult to destroy them <laughs> that comes on day day three after the clash i say did everyone enjoy this festival yeah now go out and prove it <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's kind of like, uh, Operation uh, Order 66 and people start like, just like purging everyone. Um, okay, cool. Uh, so is anyone, uh, so I think that's the end of your festival. Is there anything else you would like to add um, for the final piece of your festival or are you happy with it as it is? I can't think of anything. I mean, once the, once the festival is over, I mean, that's it. Like, that's it. We, <laughs> I just... I literally just leave the grounds. And... You don't do anything else. There's like not even like any like post admin like, oh, that's tidy up or do you? No, you're like, you know what? Nothing. I'm just I'm walking no, away people from. People get a tote bag on the way out. Cool, cool. They get a tote bag um, with some literature about our organization mm -hmm. and uh, where to go online and send me money. Brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think it's time now to head to the final part of our podcast called Floor Fillers. Floor Fillers. 
As with event management, things are bound to go wrong, so here are a couple of hypothetical questions that Russell has to deal with in the manner that he sees fit. Oh no, Mozart has cancelled last minute, who do you get to replace Mozart and Kanye West? Oh, son of a bitch, I was gonna say, <laughs> Mozart cancelled, you know Kanye's still hanging around. <laughs> Crap, alright, well we lost Mozart, there's really only, there's only one person that can, Cindy Lauper. No. Oh, uh, hello. Mate. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, oh, okay. Oh, guys, Mozart. Say. I'm just thinking, what's the? <laughs> hey, I know you guys came from Mozart, <laughs> but don't worry, I got you covered. Here comes Cindy Lauper. Yeah. Uh, Mozart's canceled. All right, so we're gonna throw in. Uh, we gotta stay classical. All right. Um, mm -hmm. we're not gonna do Wagner because we all know how he feels about the Jews, <laughs> but we're going to. <laughs> <laughs> He's not welcome at my festival. It's very woke. Yeah. It's a pretty woke. Well, I mean, yeah. And also, even if we weren't woke, yeah, I mean, he's not coming. So <laughs> he's not coming, dude. I think Mel Gibson's doing a festival down the street. Boom. Can we still? <laughs> I'm bringing back Mel Gibson jokes. <laughs> I think every 10 years we, we start ri ripping on him again just to keep him in check. <laughs> yeah, we're going to throw in. There was this classical composer. Uh, named Franz Liszt. Oh, yes. And this dude, if you read about him, dude was crazy. How so? He would he would play the piano, just the piano, but he was like, he was doing like rock star tactics before it was a thing. Yeah. So he yeah. would jump up on the piano mm -hmm. and he's going to be playing with Jerry Lee Lewis. <laughs> okay, yeah. Jerry Lee Lewis, man. And he, but Jerry Lee Lewis is like young again. Yeah. Brill. That's actually cool. Jerry Lee Lewis would rip that shit. That's actually really sick, actually. I, I love that. List uh, and uh, Jerry Lee Lewis. Look Jerry Lee stuff. Lewis going head to head. This this I know this festival is reaching levels of wank. <laughs> but you know what? We don't judge you for that kind of thing at the Elbow Room Festival. Armchair intellectuals welcome. Also, another thing, if you uh, if if this is sounding wank, don't come then. Don't, don't come. Don't don't How many times come. do I have to say it? I don't even want the people who are here to come. <laughs> They've cut our jobs for us, but that's that's it. But like, don't yeah. come. <laughs> um, oh dear, someone's running late for your festival, but fortunately, one of your favorite celebrities uh, is there and is willing to do a DJ set for you. They don't need to be a DJ, but which celebrity would you pick to do a DJ set? Oh, Matt, I could care less about this question. <laughs> DJs don't even. I uh, don't get me started. I don't understand. Let me tell you something. Number one, I don't understand the fascination. Yeah. People just love DJs. All right, but someone's got to do a DJ set. Hands down, the only man I would want to be behind the turntables is uh, Gary Busey. <laughs> okay. Do you know who Gary Busey is? Uh, rings a bell, yeah. Uh, Gary Busey. I'm going to have to Google him quickly. Um... It's, uh, it's perfectly understandable that you don't know who Gary Busey is. Gary Busey was in a lot of bad movies yes i know gary he Busey, is yeah. i think his main profession now is he's insane <laughs> his most famous line was in point break one of the greatest films of all time where he he shouts utah give me two and he's talking about two two meatball subs anyway for reasons i can't even go into my brother and i became obsessed with gary Busey when we were kids yeah uh, he's just this character actor, and he is – hes he, I, I guarantee if you typed in Gary Busey on YouTube, yeah, you, you wouldn't be unhappy. <laughs> yeah. I don't even know what's on there, but I imagine it's great. And so Gary Busey is <laughs> just freaking behind the – he's working the DJ booth. There's a lot going on here. Just <laughs> – Playing, uh, there's some great quotes on this Wikipedia. Uh, playing this role of God is easy because I'm not acting. I'm just believing. <laughs> and, and... How do you not want that guy <laughs> picking the music? <laughs> and also, in early 2015, Busey supported Donald Trump's 2016 presidential bid by saying, for the American people, vote for Donald Trump come election night. <laughs> Good? So that's the kind of vibe. I honestly, I'm, 
I almost wish I would have just had him replace Mozart on the second night. <laughs> Gary Busey spoken word. <laughs> so yeah, Gary Busey steps in. Yeah, okay. Um, and finally, final question. Okay, final question. It turns out that Miles Davis and The Clash hate each other's guts. There's bad beef between them, and they say they won't play if the other one is playing. Who do you choose between Miles Davis and The Clash? Oh, man. This is a woke festival. I don't want to look racist. <laughs> this is tough, dude. All right. Well, I'm sorry, Miles. I've got to end this thing on a... I got to end on a bang. Yeah. Someone's got to be able to follow Busey. <laughs> because this is a big ask. You've, you've got to understand now, we might have Gary Busey going on in the middle of this... <laughs> Of the festival doing spoken word. <laughs> Whoever comes in is going to be batting cleanup. So yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna say the clash, but I'm gonna take I'm gonna like say to John Coltrane, I'm gonna be like, hey man, if you want to go on stage when the when the clash are on, and just sort of be in the clash, mm-hmm. that's cool. Okay, yeah. So we've got the clash, but like we like Coltrane sneaks in and he's like playing with the clash. Oh. That, that would actually be pretty sick, actually. I think that's an um, amazing place to uh, finish up. But uh, <laughs> that's a very unique festival we just had, Russell. <laughs> and uh, and I can't wait to pay £900 to be there for my personalised toilet. Um, well, you're the, you're the kind of guy that we, uh, you know, that we're looking for. <laughs> well, Young, healthy, suggestible, <laughs> yeah. malleable mind. Yeah. That I can bend my will. Thank you, and you know, I've, um, I'm I'm already there for the comic book collection. You had me at Sex Cabin, so. Uh... Actually, if you go to the comic book collection first, you actually have to go to the Sex Camp. That's <laughs> Sex Camp. Part of a, it's one of our yeah. rules yeah. at the festival. <laughs> well, you know what I mean. Oh, I know what you mean. Uh, but yeah, hail Russell, hail Russell. Um, but um, thank you. All right, you... easy. Let's not get that's. <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll. We're trying to be a little less obvious than that. <laughs> Oh, yeah, yeah. Sorry about that. So uh, yeah, yeah. just say praise. Yeah, praise Russell. Praise Russell. Sure. All right, I'm not comfortable with that. Yeah. <laughs> and matter of fact, Matt, I'm going to have to revoke your ticket. <laughs> oh, no. That's never happened before. Um, Sorry. I'll no, ask. You, you're still welcome. You're welcome. Thank you, Russell. Where can people find you online? And, um, yeah, where would you like to plug anything for this podcast? I would. You know, Matt, I would. Um, Matt? I uh, I say this with uh, no pride whatsoever, <laughs> but I can be found on TikTok. Oh, fair play to you, man. That's good. To- Let me tell you something, man. TikTok has been nice to me so far, and some of the the, the comments are pleasant. And uh, you know, you gotta you get, yeah. So actually, that is probably mm-hmm. the best place to go after that. Uh, so what is my TikTok? I think it's just do at Russell Hicks. Mm-hmm. My YouTube YouTube.com slash hicks comedy that's you can see longer videos there and then instagram as well at russell hicks i'm all over the, i'm all over it brilliant well thank you so much for coming on russell and if you like this podcast everyone and please support castable you can check out the past episodes for free on apple and spotify make sure to give it a follow at castable podcast and you can follow me at matt house comedy on twitter twitch and instagram please give us a five star rating online and but finally please give a massive thank you to my wonderful guest it's the anarchic russell hicks Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Thank you.